morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Richard Clark for Throwback Thursday. I talk about my favourite films, my favourite TV programmes and my favourite music albums. Now, my background is I'm a, um, I'm a hypnotherapist for the last eight years and I have been a hypnotherapist for the last 14 years. Anyway, today, part of Throwback Thursday, I'm talking about my favourite films and I'm talking about a series of uh, films by a guy called Wong Kar Wai. And I've spoken about Chungking Express. I've talked about My Blueberry Nights a few week, uh, weeks ago. I've spoken about the tr um, an informal trilogy, which is The Days of Being Wild, In the Mood for Love. I'm going to talk about the last of the trilogy films, of the informal trilogy, is 2046 is a film done in 2004. 2046 is an important date in Hong Kong history because it's actually in, in, it's going to be in the future. It's going to be where China allows, it gets full control of running Hong Kong again instead of it where it was run by the British for many years. So, 2046 is this romantic drama written and produced and directed by Wong Kar Wai. It's an international co-production between Hong Kong, France, Italy, China and Germany. And it's a loose sequel to the Wong film's Days Being Wild and In the Mood for Love. It follows the aftermath of Chao Mo Wan's unconsummated affair with Su Li Zien in 1960s Hong Kong and includes elements of science fiction. So we've already talked about these affairs and so forth in the previous two films. So the plot here, there are four main story arcs. So this is why, again, I like Wong Kar Wai, he's always trying to push the boundary, trying to think where it would go. So I'm going to explain the four story parts so you can understand. It's quite complex, but you will understand it when I explain it enough. Four main story arcs listed in an appropriate order below. In typical Wong fashion, they are presented in non-chronological parts. So it's kind of like pieced, fragmented. And this is sometimes when we work with clients, because sometimes something in the future, which they feel is a problem, could happen. It's because it's been affected by something in the past and then it's affected by something in the current. So this kind of happens a lot to people. We just don't really talk about it much in Western films, apart from something like Cloud Atlas or something. So anyway, the first part is in 2046. In the future, Earth is connected via a fast rail network. Aboard the train, lonely passengers try to reach a mysterious room called 2046, repeatedly, as nothing ever changes in this room. There is no loss of sadness. The only person to return from room 2046 is Japanese man Tak. All memories are traces of tears. Returning to Hong Kong after years in Singapore, Chow has become a suave ladies' man to cover up his pain from losing Su. Um, on Christmas Eve, Chow meets Lulu, taking her home, but accidentally keeps her room key. As he leaves, he notices that her room number is 2046. Upon returning the key, Chow inquires after the room, and the landlord informs him 2046 is not available due to renovations, and instead offers 2047 next door. Chow later learns that Lulu was stabbed in 2046 the night before by a jealous boyfriend. After finishing the reservation of 2046, the landlord asks Chow if he wants to move in, but he's now accustomed to his room and remains in 2047. So the part one, we've got these two characters, Wang Jing Wen and Wang Jing Ji Win. The landlord's daughter, Jing Win, moves into 2046, and she is seeing a Japanese man her family stro father strongly opposes. Again, culturally, Chinese and Japanese do not get on. They do not like the cultural clashes. Though you'd think they'd be very similar, they are not. Eventually, Jing Wing breaks up with him and is institutionalized after a mental breakdown. The next tenant is Jing Win's younger sister, Ji Win, who attempts and fails to seduce Chow. Chow, soon after Chow runs into financial shifts, so he started writing a series called 2046 about heart sick individuals trying to find the mysterious room. Nearly all the characters of the stories are based on people Chow has met in his life, such as Su, Lulu and Jing Wen. So Bai Ling, part one, is the third 2046 tenant, is Bai Ling, a cabaret girl with a high-class prostitution, prostitute seeking a long-term relationship. The next Christmas Eve, Bai runs into Chow after her boyfriend leaves her before a planned trip to Singapore and they become friends. The relationship totally turns sexual. Chow will keep, wants to keep the relationship purely physical, continuing to see other prostitutes. When Bai realises she has feelings for Chow and asks for exclusivity, Chow refuses and they break up. Bai then returns to prostitutions and moves out of this 2046 the room. Jing Wen, part two, it's the part two of her, that, that story. After Bai leaves, Jing Wen is released from an institutional care and returns to the room 2046. Still depressed over her previous relationship, Jing Wen helps Chow with his writing. He remarks that he is the happiest post soon. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Jack Frost nipping at your nose. 
Yuletide carols being sung by a choir And folks dressed up like Eskimos Everybody knows a turkey and some mistletoe Help to make the season bright Tiny tots with eyes all aglow Will find it hard to sleep tonight They know that Santa's on his way He's no longer alone He's no longer alone He's no longer alone 你知唔知我今日唔翻工，少咗好多貼士噶？嘿，呢啲咁嘅日子，最怕一个人孤零零咁过嘅，谂住搵个人陪下咯。你讲我啊？啲男朋友好耐冇写信俾你咯。系我叫佢唔好写嘅。还点都冇可能咯，咪拖住人咯。点会冇可能啫？你揾佢啊嘛，你唔揾佢真系冇可能。阿爸点会肯啊？如果你系佢，你今晚会做咩 ？So is this firm woman he went out. He develops feelings for Jing Win and attempts a relationship, but nothing develops, and he's still in love with her previous lover. One day, Jing Win asks Chow if some things in life never change, and he replies by writing a story called 2047, which a Japanese man falls in love with on a trip home from Room 2046. While he initially tried to base story on Jing Wen's ex, he realised that the story is about himself. So while this is like this film is also about how you can rewrite your history and rewrite your past by getting therapy. So this actual idea of this story is very good. It's very interesting how this was done in 2004, nearly 20 years ago, 20 years ago, and how interesting this concept was. Now a film like this probably be on Netflix or a series, but this was quite advanced. Two thousand forty-six, part two. Tack, 
uh, portrayed by Jen Wynn's ex, tries to leave 2046, the room, because he lost his love there. On the trip, he falls in love with one of the train's gynoid assistants. So a gynoid is um, a female, a fembot robot. Yep, which has got humanoid um, characteristics, portrayed by Jing Wen, but it never responds to him. Tak realizes that he's in love with someone else and leaves the train, completing the story, making a turn point in Chow's recovery. Jing Wen part three, next Christmas Jing Wen moves to Japan and gets engaged. Depressed over the loss of Jing Wen, Chow returns, runs into Bei Ling and believes she is likely to remain in the past forever. Content with her misery, he resolves to get over Su Lin. Bye again sometime later, Ch calls Chow and they go out to dinner. She informs Chow of her plans to leave Singapore, ask for a reference, a plane fare. Bai asks where he was last Christmas when Chow had returned to Singapore to search for Su Lin Zen. And then Su Ark is Chow meet the, met the second Su after arriving in Singapore, financially spent. The second Su agrees to help him win money so he can return to Hong Kong and they become lovers. Sue bets that if Chow beats her in a high card draw, she would reveal her true identity. After winning back his money, he asks the second Sue to return to Hong Kong with him. Sue then challenges him to a final draw that Chow loses. So again, it's, all, it's about the idea of chance and loss and taking risks and about also the, the, the dynamic of how who's in control. Heartbroken Chow realises after completing his story, 2047, that the second Sue did not return with him because he would have tried to relive live the past by looking for elements of the first Sue in her. So again, sometimes people in relationships will try and go back to the uh, someone they know before and take, think, see them in a different light, all the good parts, but then they're very different people. So then the trouble is they're trying to relive certain things. This also happens to people when, say, like a first wife dies and they get remarried and they, they're trying to always compare and compare because they still haven't dealt with grief. There's a lot of, this happens in a lot of hypnotherapy sessions, you have to deal with these sort of things with people. When Chow returns to Singapore to return for the second time, he does not find her, theorising that the second Su, Eva, returned to Cambodia or was killed. And the last part, by part three, the night before Bai leaves for Singapore, Chow dines with her again. She insists on paying for dinner and hands him a stack of cash, each $10 bill representing a night they spent together. After dinner, Chow walks her back to her apartment and Bai begs him to spend the night. He reminds Yeah. 在我記憶裡,那是我們最後一次見面。Answer of a question she asked him once, whether there was anything he would not lend. And Chow realizes that it's one thing he will not lend to anyone and leave in a taxi. And the thing he won't lend to anyone is his heart. So this idea of this film 
is about how you can write where you're going, what you're doing. And again, this 2046 is the number of the hotel room. So it's, it's a symbol of the future. So this, this is what it is. So, and the year, like I said, 2030, it has only significant Hong Kong. It is 40 years after the handover of Hong Kong by the British government on 1st of July 1997, at the handover, the mainland government promised 50 years of self-regulation for the former British colony. The year 2046 represents the moment before Hong Kong's special self-regulated status ends. So Hong Kong is actually going to be self-regulated. Once that's finished, then China will take over. And this is one of the things, so it's, there's a lot of things about the level of why this is going to work, how it's going to do. So there's, there's a political slant to this. So in hypnotherapy, Yes, if we look at these things of how people decide on their lives, decide what they want to do, how they make their choices and how they reframe and try not to replicate experiences they have before, which is painful. Because again, like I've said before in many talks, people do not like change. The brain doesn't like change, so you have to work a way to make it seem seamless or make it adaptable. Anyway, as you will see all the clips and see the ideas, this is that's the finish of the trilogy. That's the finish of the um, One Car Way series. And the next series I'm going to be talking about is Christopher Nolan films, and I'm going to be talking about a few um, cartoon series as well. And in another few weeks, I'm going to be talking about um, manga cartoons as well as TV series as well as films. Anyway, if you are interested in hypnotherapy or anything like that, please contact me at richclark.net. If not, contact me here on YouTube. If you can find me on Instagram, again, either at underscore Rich Clark, you will see my wonderful face in the blue velvet jacket and the purple jumper. You will also find me that I'm going to be um, uploading things on TikTok and a new plat social media platform, and I'm also available on Facebook. Until then, until I see you, or you want a consultation, or if you just like to listen to these videos, have a good day, have a good afternoon, and have a good evening.